it's time to take our No Man's Sky Singularity gameplay to the next level. Let's make hundreds of millions of units, tens of thousands of nanites, and upgrade our exosuit slots. Space Cheddar 1 is going to get fully upgraded and 69 cargo slots, oh yeah. We're going to get the rest of our portal glyphs so we can go anywhere we want, and our very first stop is going to be snagging up this amazing alien multi-tool. I'll show you exactly how I get a free S-Class Capital Freighter. Then we are going to build an epic base here. Are you ready? Let's do it. This time we're mining for oxygen with the Positron Ejector, so I'm only going to have to do this for about 10 or 15 minutes to get a whole boatload of oxygen. Oh yeah, when I say a boatload, I'm not even kidding. We even got a bunch of cytophosphate and salt, but look at all that oxygen we have now. Earlier we were focusing mostly on chlorine, as well as a little bit of ionized cobalt, but now we are going to strictly focus on turning all of our cobalt and ionized cobalt into even more cobalt. Eventually you're going to totally and completely run out of oxygen, so it's all about turning that ionized cobalt right back into cobalt. Before you set out to sell a ridiculous amount of cobalt, make sure you stash a little bit back at your base. Even though I have a lot, I should probably have about four more stacks. We will be warping to quite a few star systems in order to make a bunch of money, upgrade our technology and cargo slots, as well as find the remainder of our glyphs, so I will need to make a whole bunch of warp cells. I will be upgrading my ship's hyperdrive, so 15 is actually quite a lot, because I won't be using very much fuel. Let me show you how we're going to make our money doing an economy crash at all of the galactic terminals on every space station we visit. Each full stack of cobalt that you sell will lower the economy by about 10%, so if you sell 8 of them, you're going to totally crash the economy. And all you have to do is just buy it all back up at a hugely discounted price, and when you get to a new star system later, you'll do the exact same thing. Once you have crashed the cobalt market, you can head over to any of the little ship guys, and they will also sell the cobalt at a discounted rate if you want to buy more. The more cobalt you have in the beginning will definitely dictate how much money you end up with at the end of this video. Time to get our warp on again. Now, I like to go to only wealthy systems. You don't have to do this. Now, if you want to, you can just click expand on any one of these systems, and it'll tell you the type of economy it is. Now, that one was satisfactory. That one's booming right there. That's actually a wealthy system, so we're going to go there. It is worth mentioning, in order to see those economy types, you will need to have an economy scanner installed on your ship. One of the very first things I like to do once I arrive in the system is just to summon the Space Anomaly, because we will be hopping onto that too, right after we hit up the space station. There's no real way to say this other than just to spit it out. This part of the playthrough is going to be a real grind. I'm going to be doing this for about four to five hours straight. The very first thing I'm going to do is come over here and upgrade my exosuit slot, either a technology or a cargo slot. I do recommend that you upgrade some of your technology early because you're going to be upgrading that too. You'll want to check the exosuit as well as the ship vendor here to see if they have any useful S-Class modules for sale and... That actually sounds like an exotic S-Class ship that just flew in, so let's check it out. We do have a little over 23 million. I mean, it's possible I can afford this, and it is in my colors, blue and gold. So, yeah, hoping for the best right here, although there's a really good chance we can't afford this because I haven't sold my Cobalt yet. Of course. So where was I? Oh yeah, checking module. So we're back at the ship module guy, and it looks like they have a hyperdrive module. I am most definitely going to be getting three of these. That's going to save us a whole bunch of warp fuel. We'll just plop that right in there. Mm-hmm. Check the multi-tool cabinet as well. Sometimes you'll get lucky, but most of the time it's going to suck. Now head back into this back room. What we're mostly looking for is travelers, or you can sell your cobalt here too. Now there's going to be a whole boat ton of these little colored globes, like this one's blue, some of them are orange, there's little black discs and things too, scarf all those up, because it's going to be a bunch of nanites as well as navigational data, and you're going to need that. I'm checking the other side for travelers as well, and it doesn't look like we see any on this space station, we'll have to check the next one. Time to make some money by crashing the economy with cobalt. Now, it is worth mentioning that you can do this with any item that the Galactic Trade Terminal sells. As long as it is already there for sale, you can crash that market. The main reason why I choose cobalt to do this, well, it's quite simple. Every single Galactic Terminal and every single system will sell cobalt. 
Even if I found a traveler and got their gravestone location, I generally land on the space anomaly now, then head to the back and upgrade either a technology or a cargo slot. Unfortunately, we can't sell any of our cobalt here, but we can upgrade two slots per system, and that's totally win. You know, the second that I hit the warp button, I realized I forgot to upgrade my hyperdrive some more. Not well, just gonna land here and hope to find that upgrade at this space station. The exosuit vendor had nothing really, but this guy right here, this guy has my hyperdrive module, and unfortunately, we don't have enough nanites, so I'm gonna have to scrap some ships in order to get those. Bummer, no travelers in the back room, might as well just come out here and scarf up all these nanites and navigational data because when there are these tables like this, they are freaking everywhere. On this economy crash, we're starting with a little over 36 million, and we're definitely going to be ending up with, I would guess, probably about 50-ish million once we end up buying all this stuff back. At this point, I'm not going anywhere until we can buy at least two more of those hyperdrive modules, and in order to make a bunch of nanites really quickly, we're just going to buy a whole bunch of B, A, and S class ships that aren't too expensive, and just turn around and scrap them for nanites. Once you have bought the ship, don't make the mistake of running over there and scrapping it. Definitely salvage any of the things you can salvage inside because you're going to get a bunch of wireling lubes, sodium, as well as chromatic metal. Now, there's another ship. Well, that one's definitely in our purchasing range, and so is that one too. We're basically paying 6.4 million units for this ship. Now, keep in mind, once you scrap a ship, you're not going to get its full value. This time, we're only going to get 4.5 million back, but we will get modules we can sell for nanites. Ultimately, you're just trading your money for nanites. It goes without saying, the better ships that you can afford to scrap will mean the better modules that you'll have to sell. Spent a few minutes scrapping ships. Now this is the second hyperdrive module I'm buying here, so I'm gonna have all the hyperdrive modules I need for my ship to be totally and completely awesome. Let's move these upgrades around a little bit. Now that configuration right there should give me the biggest bonus and save me the most amount of warp fuel. Another really cool side effect of scrapping ships is you'll get something that is called a storage augmentation. Never ever sell those. With those augmentations, you can actually add cargo slots or technology slots to your ship, and it really, really helps to pimp your ship out as much as you possibly can, as quickly as you possibly can. And with every single cargo slot that you add to your ship will increase its value quite a bit. Before we head out to our next star system, you guessed it, stopping at the anomaly to get another exosuit upgrade. Aw oh, sweet, it looks like we're gonna have our very first freighter encounter, which includes a battle with some pirates. First, we'll start out with a word of warning. When you're fighting these bad guys, do your very best not to shoot the freighter or they're gonna get pissed off at you. Next, if you just can't be bothered by doing combat because you're either afraid or just far too lazy, you can just land on the space station, hop in and out of your ship, then fly right back out here and all the bad guys will be gone. I say scrape them off your boot, even though it'll take you a little more time to actually beat them up, it does feel good to teach a bad guy a lesson. Once all the attack ships have been defeated, you're going to get a message from the freighter's commander. They're going to ask you to come on board. They want to give you a reward for your outstanding service. The reward will range from, you know, giving you this freighter totally and completely free of charge or hooking you up with something else. You can scan the deck with your discovery scanner and see what type of freighter it is, and this one's an A-Class. Now if you want, you can inspect this freighter and then claim it as your very own for free, but I highly recommend you do not do this. Wait to get a capital ship for free instead. At this stage, what you should do is just request the payment. It'll give you some faction and some random minerals, nanites, and sometimes money. It's a way better deal because you're going to get a way better freighter later. Heck yeah, we found ourselves another traveler on the very next station. Time to hook him up with 100 nanites for his grave location so we can get his glyph. Definitely gonna hook it up with these shield modules as well as these pulse engine modules. Let's stuff that in there. Definitely need to upgrade my technology some more. Running out of nanites once again, but I was able to get three of those pulse engine modules. Finally made it to the Traveler's Grave location so we can extract another glyph, and unfortunately, I still need 13 more. That might take me a little while. After you play No Man's Sky for about 4-5 to five hours after your last freighter encounter, you're going to trigger your next freighter encounter with the capital ship. 
What I'll generally do when I get the second freighter encounter to spawn is immediately reload my restore point. Before I leave the space station or the anomaly, I always have a good habit of hopping in and out of my ship just in case for instances like this. I will then warp to a system or systems I've already explored in the past. Now the last system I originally had this in, it had the Super Star Destroyer version and I want to have the Sentinel version instead. The system we're in right now has the Sentinel version, so I'm going to hop in and out of my ship to create a fresh restore point. We can now fly directly to the freighter and check out what it is, and we're not going to be bugged by any pirates. So just throwing it out there, because I probably should throw it out there. Doing this many, many, many times through many playthroughs, you're probably not going to get it on the first try. If you want to have the very, very, very best chance possible, you're going to want to be doing this in a rich economy or at a black market system. Those are the very best places to, you know, get an S-Class freighter quickly. Now, since it isn't an S-Class, it's time to reload the restore point. Once we reload, we can fly right back out there. Now, don't freak out if you don't see it right away. Sometimes the freighter will change locations. You just got to kind of find it and then fly right back over there. Do you really, really need to have an S-Class freighter? Well, you know, if you want to be the best of the best, sir, then yes. But realistically, the difference between an A-Class max slot like this one right here and an S-Class isn't all that much, really. Oh, wow. So this is actually pretty when an exotic ship flew in right as I was checking the deck here. I wonder if it's going to fly in on the next time, too, because if it does... There's a really good chance I'll be able to buy this exotic when I do get this freighter in an S-Class. Well, the freighter sucked on this trip, but lo and behold, that S-Class exotic flew in once again, so now I'm feeling really, really good about being able to get this and the S-Class freighter all at the same time. It finally happened. We got this in an S-Class and, you know, it took me an hour and 15 minutes of reloading constantly to get there, but let's see if this S-Class exotic flies in now. Oh yeah, there she is. Let's go scarf her up. Now seriously, Traveler, just throwing it out there, this is an extremely rare and extremely lucky circumstance that I just found myself in. Don't expect this to happen to you on your playthrough, but if it does, well heck yeah, we both got really super lucky. Don't forget about your fat cells. Take the teleporter. Head up and talk to the captain. It is most definitely time to inspect as well as claim this freighter as our very own. And since it's our very first freighter, we just saved 178 million. Cha-ching! I pretty much have my exosuit fully upgraded, but we're still looking for travelers in order to get glyphs. At this stage of the game, after my second freighter encounter, I'm usually still looking for the glyph stone, so what I like to do is buy up all of the elements that I possibly can off all these little ship guys at every single space station that I visit. I will also be making tens of thousands of nanites at this time, so I'm going to be buying each one of these ships after I buy all their elements. Now this is totally up to you, but sometimes you're out here scrapping and you find some really nice S-Class ships, and they always give you the storage augmentations each time you scrap them. So as long as you have the space cheddar available, you might as well do it. Maybe not with like haulers or something, because they can get really expensive, but yeah. This fighter isn't too bad, so we'll just get it. Realistically though, at this stage of the game, losing 17 million in order to get guaranteed storage augmentations as well as three S-Class modules isn't really a very bad deal in itself. See what I mean? 75 million to buy one augmentation, the heck with that Jazz, we're just gonna keep scrapping ships in order to get them because it's way, way better. Sweet, Space Cheddar 1's up to 64 cargo slots right now, you know it would be even more glorious? Spending just a little more time scrapping some ships, just enough time to get five more cargo slots. Not six, not four, but five cargo slots. I reckon 69 is the perfect number of cargo slots. Mm -hmm. The sucky part though, well, we still need seven more glyphs. Oh my god, why is it taking so long? Couple hours of gameplay, scrapped a lot of ships and every single system I visited, but we finally got all 16 glyphs. The next thing I need to do is stock up on a whole bunch of salvage data, so I'm gonna have to farm a bunch of these buried technology modules just for a little bit. When you get enough salvage data, head up to the Space Anomaly and hit up the Construction Research Station. You're going to want to head over to the Agricultural's Modules tab and then just start buying everything that I buy right now. 
ultimately you want all the grow stations as well as all the plants that you can possibly grow. I won't be planting all of them in this playthrough, but you will be planting some of them later down the road. You can do this next stage on your freighter or here at a trading post on a planetary surface. Both places will offer basically the same loot tables, and if you're going to be doing the quests that I'm going to show you here in a bit, do it in a Viking system, so buy a Viking dagger right now. You'll also want to be purchasing the plant fiber material here from all these ship guys. They're going to be offering a whole different variety. Each guy has kind of a different inventory. Just keep buying until you get everything you need. Now you can also get Mordite. Mordite is one of the things we really do need still. And you can get that just by bucking down animals if you want to. If you're not into space homicide to buck down all the animals in order to get Mordite, don't worry about it because Facium can actually be turned into Mordite. It's just more important that you get all of the materials that you see right here, probably minus the Mordite. Next, head over to any space station and then hit up the Stellar Cartographer. Before talking to him, make sure you bring navigational data because that's what it's going to cost to buy the exact chart right there. We want the alien cartographic data. Buy at least five of these. I'm just... I don't know why I bought 10, but I did. Using the chart is easy. You just plot your route and it will give you the location. You're hoping for a monolith. Man, we're lucky. That's exactly what we got. If you don't get a monolith, just hover or land near the location, then plot another route on the chart until you get a monolith. Just throwing it out there, you can screw this up. So if you answer the riddle incorrectly, you will need to reload your autosave. But if you do answer it correctly, then you'll be able to actually ask for where the portal location is actually located. If you do end up doing this in a Viking system, this is where the monolith will actually ask you for a Viking dagger in order to give you the portal location. Once you know the portal's location, and I usually do this in my main system, I will always build a little base here with a teleporter to it. Finishing the final touches on my portal base here, now I'll be able to get back when I want to come back here. Let's go out to the portal and actually get it all charged up. We're fixing to go hook up with a really cool alien multi-tool, and not only is it cool, it's blue, yellow, and purple, so, you know, gotta do it. Before you charge her up, make sure you have plenty of carbon, sodium, cobalt, as well as copper. Half the time I end up forgetting about the copper, then I gotta go out there and find it, or go teleport to my base to go get it. Now it's freaking on. We got her totally charged up. It's time to activate this portal. Let's go hook up with that tool. If you'd like to get this multi-tool, pause it now. The last symbol is the triangle. I found this tool by watching a Beeblebum video, and oh yes, he makes great videos, as well as finds great multi-tools. This alien multi-tool is extremely easy to find, and you don't have to do anything special to make it spawn. You just need to go there and find it, which will be super easy with me showing you. You're going to hop right into your ship and fly directly straight up into the air from where the portal is located. You can do kind of a little hyperspace jump if you want to get there faster. That's totally up to you. Once you get up high enough, you're going to look back down at the planet and you're going to be wanting to look to the right side of the ring. There should be a couple com balls over there. Fly in the direction of the closest com ball. The one I chose right here is actually a base. The actual location we want is just to the right of us. Let's go check it out and hope I've not been sent on a total and complete wild goose chase, but I totally believe that that is the one up there on the hill right there. Yep, that's the one right there. There is a bunch of com balls around it as well. Somebody's got a base with a landing pad near it. Yep, definitely guessing this is the place. If you can see it right now, my little Viking guy has got goosebumps on top of his goosebumps. He's so freaking excited. This is actually a really good multi-tool. It has three supercharges right next to each other as well as just one off to the side. Yes, there are multi-tools that can be better than this one, but since you can have multiple multi-tools, I don't see anything wrong with me hooking up with a blue, yellow, and purple alien. I mean, really. When you get a new toy, you generally whip it out in front of your friends. Am I right? Get back here, bros. I want to show you my new tool. Well, that was super duper quick and easy. Now let's finish up the last farming we're going to have to do in this entire playthrough. You can pretty much do this anywhere, but I like to do this in a black market system because generally the loot that drops here is better, even though our main goal really isn't to collect all this loot because quite frankly, we're basically space daddy warbucks right now. The main target loot that we're after is actually salvage frigate modules, which I did get earlier in the playthrough, like basically on accident. But now, we have to farm them for real, and don't shoot those little ships or you will lose faction. 
Once you have laid the total and complete smackdown on all the freighter modules out there, you can fly in here and decide to sell your stuff. It's actually better to go to a different system that isn't a black market system and sell the stuff there, but ultimately, you're trying to see how many salvage frigate modules you can get, and sometimes it takes a little bit to get a bunch of these salvage frigate modules. Bro, I spent like three hours out there farming those modules, reloading my save, farming my modules over and over again. We ended up with 57. That's just... I'm never gonna farm those things again, guys. It's just too much. And if you followed everything I've done up to this point, you've got all your plant fiber ready and you've bought all the extra elements that you're gonna need. Since I had the room, I basically grabbed everything out of my storage box, so I'll never need to worry about needing anything while I'm building. The first order of business is just to get rid of all these extra rooms that always comes on every single freighter. Now every single time you remove these rooms or any of the stuff in it, you will get the components back. Before we can build anything, you really don't have very many things you can actually build, so we're going to have to head over here and waste all those salvage frigate modules we spent hours farming. The pieces that don't have a nanite cost attached to them, those are the pieces I ended up purchasing on this round. Now, I might buy some of the windows here in just a little bit. Oh man, I like totally forgot that the ship colors actually cost nanites, and I'm going to have to burn 10,000 nanites to get blue and yellow. Man, I'm telling you, I literally don't have enough daggone friggin' modules for all these. See what I'm talking about? These warp upgrades are really, really expensive, so... <laughs> Well, looks like I'm gonna be farming more of the frigate modules soon. Today is not that day, so let's just start getting our refinery line all set up. You'll need one refiner for each plant type. Now you'll be building two to three cultivation chambers off the end of each one of those refineries. Right now you're seeing me build two chambers off each one, but here in a bit I'm gonna add an extra row. Let's now plop down a galactic terminal. We're gonna put this really centrally located right near my galactic trade terminal and we're gonna plop down one of my teleport chambers now we'll be able to teleport to and from our freighter let's now throw down all 10 of our storage rooms this is gonna give us like an absolute insane amount of storage space for any loot that we feel like you know accidentally stuffing in our bags and oh my goodness it's gonna take me forever to run back I'm gonna plop down my construction specialist room right next to my galactic terminal Scanner rooms are actually pretty cool, so let's plop that next to the teleporter. You'll want to place at least three or four fleet command rooms near the front of your freighter. Since we're in the neighborhood, might as well stick my orbital exocraft materializer right here. I'm going to create a stellar extractor room. Now you're going to want to build quite a few of these because they literally just grab materials right out of thin air based off a of star type. For this next step, you're going to need all the elements shown right here except for the Mordite. Right now, we don't have very much on hand, so we're going to have to create more. First, let's start with frost crystals. In order to get more of those, you just mix it with dioxide in your refiner. You can create more fungal mold by mixing the mold with ammonia. Star bulb can be mixed with paraffinium to create more star bulb. If you need more cactus flesh, well, you can mix that with pyrite to get even more. Gamma root plus uranium will make yourself some more gamma root. Mixing selenium and phosphorus together will get you more selenium. If you put facium by itself in a refiner, it'll create mordite. But we're going to mix it with oxygen to create more facium. Once you get a bigger stash than this of facium, start turning it into mordite. Once you have a stash of each of the plant materials, you're free to start planting. And we're going to start with frostwort here because it mainly makes glass as well as living glass. You will need quite a bit of that if you plan on making any really super cool bases on any really neat planet or moons you find in the future. I'll be planting my gamma weed right next to the frost wart. The main purpose of gamma weed is to create lubricants. Now this is a blueprint that you don't have yet, but you are kind of preparing to have it pretty soon. One lubricant and five glass will make one living glass, so that's mostly what you're going to be using this for. Lubricant can also be used in some cooking recipes, so don't go wasting all your lubricant on your alone time, traveler. Time to plant some fungal clusters. I'm just going to stuff these right next to the gamma weed. The main benefit of growing fungal clusters, you'll have the ability to make acid, which is one of the components to make liquid explosives. Mordite root is the second component needed to actually create acid, so I'm just going to be planting them right next to my fungal mold. 
Now I remember back in the day I used to make my farms like outrageously massive, but these refineries really make it so you don't have to have a gigantic farm anymore. Since I'll be needing Facium to create Mordite, I might as well plant it right next to the Mordite. Facium is the second element you need to create your Space Lubricants Traveler. Which, in a way, is kind of disgusting if you use it for anything else than it's supposed to be used for, because this stuff is created from poop. Let's plant something that smells a little bit better, like these star bulbs here. A star bulb can be used for cooking as well as a few other odds and ends, but mostly you're going to be growing this to create polyfiber. And polyfibers are one of the main ingredients to make circuit boards. Circuit boards are worth quite a bit of money. Time to plant some cactus. This cactus flesh right here is actually responsible for making two different blueprints. Alone it will make unstable gel and if you pair it with the star bulb, you can create the polyfibers. One thing you might want to keep in mind when growing these, they have a really, really long growth cycle. Leave it to me to forget how to count. As far as the main blueprints go that, you know, you're fixing to get here in a little bit, the solar vine is the very last one that you're going to need to plant. Selenium and frost crystal is the main ingredients to make the heat capacitor. A heat capacitor plus a polyfiber will make the circuit board. Once you complete your farm, you're going to get this really super awesome feeling wash over you. Ah. Now we're ready to start the next stage of our quest. We need to head over to a GEC system and hire an overseer. He's going to man that panel right behind me. Slight detour, they had a whole bunch of really cool modules, so I had to start pimping out my new S-Class multi-tool, of course. You know, just for reasons. Check out the back rooms in a GEC system, you're always going to find the overseer there, and he can kind of shop around. I, I really dig his, like, gigantic ears, and he's kind of purple and white. My wife likes purple and white, so we're going to go with him. Now, we could have started our Overseer quest ages ago, but realistically, I like to be like super duper spaceman and totally prepared for it. Once you begin your Overseer quest, No Man's Sky Singularity really starts to open up. And as long as you follow this guide, hopefully I explained it well enough for you, you are most definitely prepared for anything that No Man's Sky throws at you from this moment on. Trust me, even though I've showed you quite a bit in this Best Start series, I have only scratched the surface of what No Man's Sky has to offer. Good luck, Traveler. You now have the skills for success.